Hey everyone, it's David here with Surplus Institute. So you're probably noticing that I have a different background. First of all, before I get into that, it's same background, but different angle, I should say. One of the questions I just got on my YouTube channel was, how do I become a private investigator? How do I get my California license? Let's go and talk about that. It's fairly simple to do. Before we go there, my computer, the power source is having some sort of issue and I'm having to take it down to Apple. I'm really bummed. I have that computer you see in the background. That's like one of my first Macs that I've had. That thing's probably about 10 to 12 years old, which I haven't powered that up in a while. Actually, my kids jump on that sometimes. And I've got this laptop that I'm on right now. So you're going to see a different angle, different camera angle. Hopefully in the next few days, I'll have my Mac back. It's I'm kind of bummed about this but it is what it is okay so let's go and answer the question that was just asking me how do i get registered in california really quick a couple of the questions i get all the time is do i have to have my license to be able to work in california you don't have to have like any special license but you do have to be registered with the state you do have to have their permission approval and one of the other questions i get all the time is do I have to give California my personal information when I register? Well, you do have to give them your ID. And I have dealt with the Franchise Tax Board, the California Franchise Tax Board. So right now I've dealt with a case where the son was deceased and he had a corporation and he had like 50,000 in there. It was a ridiculous amount. And California would not let it get released because the corporation was suspended. When I contacted the Franchise Tax Board, I never thought I would say this, but it's easier to deal with the IRS than it is with the California Franchise Tax Board. And I'm trying to help get certain people paid on suspended corporations. Some of them are just deceased. The person died and they just want the year that the tax, like the 800 or 900 a year that they get for the taxes for the business. And it's like, okay, guys, he deceased on this. Can we, can we go ahead and waive these fees? Can we do this? And they're very difficult to deal with. And I say that, I never thought I would say that I'd rather deal with the IRS and with them, but the IRS is like a lot easier to deal with than the state of California. I hate to say that. I love California. It's my home state. I have moved out. So going back to that question, do I have to give California my personal information? California knows who you are. If they want to find you, they're going to find you. So I would just give them your personal information and be done with it. But let's go and answer the question here. How do I register in California? So what you do is just go to your search bar and just put California unclaimed property. Okay, so this took me right to searching for unclaimed property or checking the status of a claim. What I want to do is I want to become a licensed investigator. So I'm going to click on home. I'm going to go to unclaimed property and I'm going to go to investigators. It's good to get familiar with the investigator's handbook. There's one and I always tell people get familiar with this investigator handbook and forms. You should read that. It's a very long book or very long, like kind of like an ebook PDF. I would read two or three pages a day, get familiar with it because you're going to have situations. California state is good at answering questions, but I would get familiar with it. Investigators frequently asked questions about becoming an investigator. Bam, right there. Do I need to be licensed? No, California does not require you to be licensed. You do have to register. Let's go into how to register. How do I register to become an investigator? You're going to fill out these five numbers and then go and send this to the state of California. California, your business and contact information, your first and last name if registering as an individual or name of company if registering as a business. A couple of things on this. I did everything in my personal name when I first started and then I switched it over into JD Vista, which I've dissolved since I have another corporation now. And I would just click checks in my personal name and then I switched over and, and you could just definitely do that. If you register your business, you have to have what's called an EIN number, employer identification number. Do not pay anyone to do that. Just go to, I'll do a video on this. It's fairly simple. You can just go to the IRS site and fill out a real simple form. And within 24 to 48 hours, you will get your EIN number. With that, you can open up a bank account. You will be paying taxes on your business and everything. So just kind of be ready for that. Having any EIN numbers the route that you want to go. I, I like my business name because then I'm doing it as a business. Plus it gives me, it gives a sense of more professionals and people feel more safe with the corporation than they do with an individual. Physical mailing address for your business. I just have a UPS store for my business. And what I do is I just use that one and the state's fine with that. A list of employees authorized to represent your business in contacting our office or the public. First and last name, a copy of the government issued ID. They want that for you as well. So if you register just for you and you have no employees, which at the time on number three, I had none. They want the phone numbers and they want the email addresses. So what I did is I just put my name, copy of my driver's license. That's where the home address comes into play. My phone number and my email address. A copy of the document showing the tax identification number to be used for claim or payment. So they're going to want either a copy of your social security card or the EIN number, which I went over with you in the beginning, and a copy of your private investigator's license. They used to require a statement of why you wanted to be an investigator. They don't anymore. 
What I did with mine is I just put, hello, my name is David Church. I'm a property flipper. I've noticed in helping people sell their properties that many of them have unclaimed funds they didn't know they've had. I would like to help individuals be able to retrieve their money. And, and that's all I said. And I sent it in. They were fine with that. So they're not really super strict. What you will not get though, so you email it, you just put them in. And I put it on a, I put it on pages. I have a Mac. I converted it to PDF. I signed it, sent it in with a copy of my driver's license. About a week went by and I didn't hear anything. I emailed this email and I just said, hey, just double check. I haven't heard anything. Do I need to mail this in? They mailed me back and said, oh, you're registered. You're fine to go. We don't send confirmations out. Everyone I know who's registered as an investigator, they get that same email back. It's like, hey, you're fine. You're registered. We, we just don't notify people that they got registered, but you're good to go. I would still verify with them, make sure they got the email, make sure it got processed. I would just say, okay, I'm registered. I do know people that start working in claims. It does take a few months to start getting paid three to six to eight, they have been really slow since COVID. And a lot of people say, well, I want to get paid today. Well, I do too. Everyone wants to get paid today. But like I'm doing this on May 7th on this video. Imagine if I get paid, say it takes six months. So I get paid November 7th. And then I do another one next week and I get paid next week and uh, no, a week after that. So like November 12th. And I, I get four or five checks a month. That starts adding up. And what you do today is going to get you paid tomorrow. You have to do what other everyone wants. And we live in a society where it's now. Everyone wants to get paid now. I get it, including myself. If I want food in five minutes, I could have food if I if I leave my house. If I want to get something, a gas, I mean, everything is so convenient. And sometimes you just have to step out of that comfort zone, trust the process, and go for it and work. You do have to watch your leads. You do have to monitor them. You do have to make sure that you're getting payment. Hey, everyone, I hope you liked this video. I hope this was helpful. Do me a favor. Give me a like if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't down below. And I'll see you tomorrow.